Wow, I'm cold. That's pretty much life in Antarctica. Well, at least for everyone who doesn't know much about this icy continent. However, if you choose to learn more about this cold, desolate space, you'll find out that this place has more scary occurrences and phenomena than any other place in the world. Thankfully, it's all the way down under us. I'm your host, Andrew, and I did the deed of finding the top 10 scary discoveries made in Antarctica, just so we don't have to travel there. At a number 10 spot, we have Blood Falls. No, these waterfalls don't actually produce real blood. Sorry guys. Blood Falls is a natural phenomenon in Antarctica that gets its name from the reddish brown color of the water that flows from it. It is located on the Taylor Glacier, which is part of the McMurdo Dry Valleys in East Antarctica. The water that flows from the Blood Falls is high in iron, which gives it this reddish color in the first place. The source of the water at Blood Falls was a mystery for years. Scientists believe that the water was coming from a lake beneath the glacier, but they're unable to find any sort of evidence of such a lake. It was not until recently that researchers were able to confirm that the water comes from a lake that is trapped beneath the glacier, which is about 2 million years old. The lake is cut off from the surface and has been isolated for such a long time that it becomes highly saline and contains high levels of iron. The water from the lake flows through the cracks in the glacier and emerges at the Blood Falls, where it mixes with seawater from the coast. The combination of the high salt content and the iron gives the water its distinctive red color. Blood Falls is an important site for scientific research as it provides insight into the history of Antarctica and the processes that shape the continent over time. But hey, most people don't even care about that because it looks like blood. Makes for a way better story. Number nine, Martian meteorites. Allen Hills 84001 or ALH 84001 is a meteorite that was discovered in 1984 in the Allen Hills region of Antarctica. The meteorite is believed to have originated from Mars and it is one of the oldest known meteorites from the planet. ALH 84001 has garnered significant attention from scientists and the media due to the possibility that it could contain evidence of past life on Mars. In 1996, a team of scientists led by David McKee of NASA's Johnson Space Center published a paper in the journal Science that claimed to have found evidence of microbial life in the meteorite. The team claimed that they had found small structures within the meteorite that resembled fossilized bacteria, as well as chemicals that could have been produced by living organisms. The discovery of possible signs of past life on Mars sparked intense debate among scientists and the general public, and it still remains a topic of scientific investigation to this day. Although some scientists have challenged the conclusions of the 1996 study, others have continued the study of the meteorites and searched for further evidence of past life on Mars. Now the meteorite is currently housed at the National Museum of Natural History in Washington DC, so if you ever want to see real Martian material, this is the place to go. Number 8, the strongest wind on the planet. Antarctica is known as the windiest continent on earth due to several factors. One of the factors is the lack of obstacles at the surface, such as hills, buildings, or trees, which allows the wind to flow freely. In addition, some areas of the continent have large slopes that can generate intense winds, and the presence of large temperature contrasts can create strong winds due to the resulting pressure differences. The strongest winds in Antarctica, called the Katabatic winds, occur in the coastal regions only. These winds are caused by the movement of dense cold air from high elevations to the coast, where it accelerates and can reach velocities of over 200 kilometers per hour. These winds are so strong that they can even transport sea ice away from the coast in the winter, leaving the ocean ice free despite the freezing temperatures. The highest wind ever recorded here in Antarctica was at a French base back in 1972, with winds reaching up to 320 kilometers per hour, 200 miles per hour just for you Americans. The most odd thing about this is that most of the time, it isn't even snow here, but instead it's due to the strong winds picking up everything on the ground and just moving it around. At a number 7 spot with antibiotic resistant bacteria. Researchers from the University of Chile have discovered that certain bacteria in Antarctica have genes that give them natural antibiotic and antimicrobial resistance. Yup, just went through one pandemic, looks like we're eventually going to encounter another one. Anyways, these these genes which allow the bacteria to survive in extreme conditions are contained in mobile DNA fragments that can be easily transferred to other bacteria. The researchers collected samples from the Antarctic Peninsula between 2017 and 2019 and found that Pseudonoma bacteria, which is a common group in the region, are not pathogenic but can be a source of resistant genes that are resistant to common disinfectants. The researchers raised concerns that climate change could increase the risk of infectious diseases spreading from the polar regions, which just means that the ice is containing global 
global level dangers and it's just a matter of time for it to melt and release it to the world. Number six, weird life forms. Scientists conducting research in Antarctica have made a surprising discovery of stationary sponge-like creatures living in a submerged region beneath the ice shelf. These organisms, which are similar to sea sponges, are able to survive in complete darkness at temperatures of negative 2.2 degrees Celsius and a distance of 260 kilometers from the open sea, which is something that a few known life forms are able to achieve. The discovery raises many questions for scientists, including how the creature got there, how how long they were there for and what they feed on. It is also unclear whether these creatures are common throughout Antarctica or if they're only found in this exact region. This is the first record of a community living in the depths of an ice shelf and it challenges current theories about the development of life. Climate change and the increasing collapse of ice shelves in recent years have made it urgent for scientists to study and protect these ecosystems before they are destroyed. However, reaching these creatures which are 260 kilometers beneath the surface will require new and innovative methods of study. In the Humphrey list, we have the Piri Reese map. The Piri Reese map is a historical document that has garnered much attention and controversy over the years. More specifically, for showing that Antarctica was ice free. Created in the early 16th century by Ottoman Turkish Admiral and the cartographer Piri Reese, the map is known for its detailed and accurate depiction of the coast and features of the New World. This included South America, the Caribbean, and parts of the east coast of North America. In addition, in addition to these features, the map also includes notes of the geography, climate, and indigenous people of the regions depicted. However, it is the depiction of the northern coast of Antarctica of the Piris map that has sparked the most controversy. According to the map, the northern coast of Antarctica is shown as being ice free which some believe suggests that the continent was mapped before it was covered in ice. This idea has been met with skepticism obviously, as there is no historic or scientific evidence to even support it. In fact, geological evidence suggests that the latest date that the Queen Maud land in Antarctica could have been charted as an ice-free state is around 4000 BC. Whether or not the Piri's map truly holds the key to a lost civilization or an ancient mystery remains to be seen, but one thing is for certain, it continues to captivate the imagination and spark debate among historians and researchers to this day. Number four, Mount Erebus. Mount Erebus is an active stratovolcano located on Ross Island in Antarctica. It is the highest volcano in Antarctica and the southernmost active volcano on Earth. Mount Erebus is part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, which is a region around the Pacific Ocean that is prone to earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, which also means it is the most active volcano in Antarctica and has been continuously erupting since 1972. The volcano is known for its persistent degassing lava lake, which is one of the only few in the world. The most obvious danger is the risk of volcanic eruptions, which can release ash, lava, and other volcanic materials. These materials can cause damage to infrastructure and disrupt transportation, as well as posing an extreme risk to people who live near the volcano. But obviously, it's Antarctica, so not a lot of people live here. Unrelated to the dangers of the volcano, but there was a horrific event that took place on Mount Erebus as well, which was when Air New Zealand McDonnell Douglas DC-10 aircraft crashed into the side of the volcano. The plane was carrying 257 people, including passengers and the crew, and all aboard were killed in the crash. This has led many people in the area to believe to not only worry about the volcano, but also the spirits of these people who passed away from this plane ride. Number three, Lake Vostok. Lake Vostok is a large subglacial lake located in Antarctica beneath the Russian Vostok Station. It is the largest of the subglacial lakes in Antarctica and one of the largest in the world. However, it is located 4,000 meters beneath the East Antarctic Ice Sheet and is covered by thick layers of ice. It is thought to be one of the most isolated and pristine bodies of water on Earth as it has been cut off from the surface for millions of years. Lake Vostok was first discovered in the 1970s by Russian scientists using satellite imagery and ice penetrating radar. The lake is named after Russian Vostok Station, which is located on the ice sheet above it. Scientists believe that Lake Vostok could contain unique and diverse life forms, as it has been isolated from the surface for such a long time. This has caused many conspiracists claiming that the lake contains dangerous viruses and ever more concerning predators. In 2012, Russian scientists successfully drilled down to the lake and collected samples of water and ice from its surface. The findings revealed thousands of bacteria, pollen, and all sorts of marine organisms. Two mummified penguins. Ornithologist Stephen Emsley made a surprising discovery while exploring the coast of Antarctica's Ross Sea in 2016. They found the corpses of both newly dead and mummified Adelie penguins. Emsley 
supposedly excavated some of the remains and took them back to his lab for radiocarbon analysis, which revealed that some of the remains were nearly 800 years old, while others were as ancient as 5,000 years old. Emsley believes that the corpses were frozen in ice and preserved for centuries, and that the warming climate caused the ice to melt and reveal the ancient penguin colony. You can only imagine seeing an entire penguin graveyard. It would definitely be a pretty unsettling thing to see, especially seeing them fully intact due to the cold conditions. Emsley's analysis also revealed that the penguin colony at the site had experienced three waves of occupation, with the last wave occurring 800 to 1,000 years ago. Emsley also speculates that the penguins abandoned the colony during the onset of the Little Ice Age, which covered the area in ice and snow and likely blocked the penguins' access to the ocean. This discovery is in the documentary named secrets in the ice so if you ever want to see what they saw I highly recommend seeing this number one the singing Ross ice shelf the Ross ice shelf is a large thick mass of floating ice that extends from the continent of Antarctica into the Southern Ocean it's famous for the sounds it makes which many say is reminiscent of a didgeridoo or the drone of a horror film soundtrack it is also the largest ice shelf in the world, covering an area of about 500,000 square miles. The Ross Ice Shelf is constantly in motion, with ice flowing from the continent out onto the shelf. This movement can cause the ice to crack and creak, which is the real reason why some people have reported hearing a sound coming from the ice shelf. There are several possible explanations for this phenomenon. One theory is that the sound is caused from the ice shelf's motion and the friction between the ice and the underlying rock. Another possibility is that the sound is caused from the vibration of the ice shelf as it moves and flexes. Regardless of the cause, the sound is a fascinating and mysterious aspect of the ice shelf that continues to intrigue scientists and the general public to this day. Well, these are the top 10 scary discoveries made in Antarctica. What do you guys think about this list? Leave a comment down below with your thoughts, but don't forget to like and subscribe to this video for some more content. I'm your host, Andrew, and I hope you guys have a scary day.